Okay, let's go over our tray setup. So you have your patient here. You're gonna need your ligature cutter. It cuts ligature wire. You have your distal end cutters. It cuts the distal, uh, which is right back here. Okay. Um, you have your math owl, which is used for your elastic ties. And that's an extra ligature cutter. All right. So you guys asked me, how do you take this ligature off that we just tied on? So you would take your ligature cutters and go in the corner and you would cut it and it would come off like that. Okay, can you see that? Okay. And then the next one's not a ligature cutter. So I will take one of my instruments, um, either a scaler or an explorer, and take that off. Okay, and that's how that comes off. Now, I did find a wire, and this is an 1825 stainless steel. I'm gonna open that packet. And that wire normally would fit right in there, but you can see the brackets aren't lined up. And so this would be too big of a wire. We'd need a flexible wire, okay? Um, but let's go ahead and put this, you see that little identification dot there? That's where you mark your centrals right there. And you see how far back that wire is hanging? That's definitely a pokey wire. So you want to get as close as you can to the distal of that uh, arch wire tube. And you're going to cut it and the distal end cutter holds it. And so now you see how much is left sticking out there, right? That for some people might irritate them. So you might want to cut it again to try to get it as close as possible. Um, and then when you kind of tap this, you see there's the little piece that we cut off, okay? Go around to the other side, and there's the other um, wire poking out. Get as close as possible, and then there you go, okay? So you start tying your wire in, and one of the things I like to tell patients is, um, whether you're boy or girl, everybody has bass in their voice, and so, once you get the wire in and you tie it in, sometimes the base can make things travel. You know, you've seen people, um, that movie Jurassic Park, where the dinosaurs are uh, stomping and you see that vibration in the water, that glass of water. Same thing happens here. Um, or if you have change up on your dashboard and you're blaring your music, you'll see the change vibrate and move. And so that's what you wanna do with this. You wanna tell them this wire might slide around from one side to the other, and you'll know if that um, midline mark comes around. And when it does, look how much is sticking out now, okay? So how do you fix that at home? What would you do? What would you tell your patient? Put wax on it. Put wax on it, okay? What you don't want them doing is taking a pair of uh, cuticle cutters that look like this and going back there and trying to cut it because they're gonna end up popping their brackets off, okay? Um, if it's really bothering them, and especially if they're getting ready to go out of town, tell them to come in for a quick visit. Um, but again, anything told ahead of time, 
you're giving them an example of what could happen. If they, if you don't tell them that could happen, now it sounds like you're just making up an excuse and you messed up putting their wire in. So educate your patients about that stuff, okay? Um, but you definitely give them wax, show them how to use it, um, and there you go. So any questions about that? Now, if I try to force this wire in, especially with this being plastic and not being, you know, human gum and tissue and stuff, it's going to pop that bracket off. It's, it's too much of a, a force on there. So um, we're going to put a flexible wire in there. When you first start out with the wires, um, initial bonding, you're going to start out with like a 14 nitai, which is nickel titanium. It's a very flexible wire. You leave that in for about four to six weeks, okay? And the reason you leave it in there that long is the teeth are going to move within a week, but you want to have time for your osteoblast and osteoclast, that uh, bone resorption to happen and then building back the bone. Okay, you don't want to burn the roots out by just moving them and then two weeks later changing the wire. You've got, you have to give it time to build back up the bone. And then you might go to a 20 night tie, again, four to six weeks. This is where your patients get a little frustrated because they look in the mirror and they see their teeth straight now. And they're like, why do I have to have them on for two years if all of this, because you have to take your time, okay? Uh, you have to move through bone and and look out for that bone resorption, okay? And then you might go to a 20 stainless steel, um, and again, four to six weeks. And this is where you, you might add your open coal spring, because remember we used it in that other uh, video, that flexible wire crimped because it wasn't stainless steel. And a round wire, if it's one number, it's round, okay? Now, if we go to an 18 by 25, it's two-dimensional, okay? That's rectangular, okay? So it would be 18 by 25. And then, again, four to six weeks. And then let's say we do an 18 by 18. That would be a perfect square, okay? And in these wires, you might be doing something like um, tip back bend, okay? Um, adding slight adjustments, stepping up a certain tooth, stepping down a certain tooth, um, adding lingual root tip, um, compensate and curve on the upper, reverse curve on the lower, okay? So all of these things are so important. And then when you get to these, now we're talking about wearing elastics, okay? And I'll do a completely different section on the elastics. But if you still have that, um, that over jet and you wanna pull the teeth back, you put elastics from the upper canines to the lower, sixes, first molars, okay? And it's pulling back on the upper and forward on the lower. So this is why, you know, when you add all of these weeks up and you add elastics, that's why it takes so much time. It takes even more time when your patient doesn't wear their elastics or their headgear, okay? So if you're wearing these, <laughs> headgear, oh yeah, I wore headgear at 22. That's that was, yeah, it was nice. Um, do you got any pictures of I, I do, actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, we, we did a competition in the office, and who can beat Melinda how many hours wearing the headgear? And a little boy went to um, Myrtle Beach and actually got bit in the head by a shark, had to have 88 stitches. What? And he calls and says, very competitive kid, he said, um, can I still wear my headgear? I want to beat Melinda. And I said, I concede, you win. That is awesome. So you want to be very personable with your patients. Um, 
and I was I was very impressed by that. Um, but most patients don't like to wear their headgears, so um, headgears and elastics is this last, you know, part of it. Okay. Any questions?